today we are going to talk about uh, exploiting vulnerable email clients. My name is Zulian Nesterov and I'm working in a company Shape Security as a security researcher and most of my time you can find me uh, whether breaking different things or working on something that will eventually break things. Uh, my name is Max Goncharov. I'm working also for the Shape Security. I'm a security researcher uh, with uh, some kind of historical thing because I was presenting for Black Hat before and I uh, made uh, different researches around the cyber underground, vulnerable research, and uh, botnets research. So, and today we're going to talk about a really interesting thing. Um, and thank you that you are coming here, still coming. So, we will just go further. Um, you know um, that you can be, uh, have a problems actually with your email address and email account uh, in different ways. Like in most cases you have a problems when your account is stolen. But how basically account is stolen usually uh, in case we're talking about the email address. So the main, one of the most uh, common things like your account is stolen because you was trying to log in to somewhere. Uh, and uh, basically the login page was instead of the real login page was a phishing page. It's one of the options. Another option like the botnet uh, can uh, overtake your access credentials or keystrokes and you will lose your account. There are some other ways but we can talk about today a really special way how you can lose access to your account. And uh, i give you just a simple uh, example. So for example you are talking about the company you are starting working. And your employee giving you the laptop which is configured to use the email account and they also give you access credentials. Of course you're trying to use these access credentials as an um, uh, uh, entry to your email account from your private device as well. So you're taking your access credentials, you open for example your iOS or uh, Android device, put this access credentials in in the just simple mail app and start using your account. But after some time you figure out this account is stolen. So for example, sysadmin of the company call you and say, hey, we found out that the leak, uh, recent leak of the certain uh, million of uh, email accounts found somewhere in the underground, in your account is also over, uh, over there. So what's the deal? And uh, th in this case, maybe, maybe, your account was stolen because of the protocol called AutoDiscover. So uh, this protocol um, actually uh, was introduced by Microsoft in 2006. 2006 Microsoft announced this protocol as a way to make life easier for the users. And they announced that this protocol will be released with a product called uh, um, Microsoft Office 2007. And uh, actually uh, in 2008 Microsoft released also the document how this auto discover protocol really uh, working. So the uh, document uh, released at the time was with the version 0 0.1 and up till now they released several, I mean dozen of documents uh, describing this protocol. In 2009 uh, uh, Mozilla followed Microsoft and released the similar protocol uh, to make life easier of the email user. And this protocol is like uh, auto config protocol, it's called some, uh, some kind of uh, similar. And it's also widely used in Thunderbird nowadays. In 2010, Microsoft released additional, I mean, on, let's say, next generation of the AutoDiscover protocol, which uh, support um, communication for Office documents and uh, Office applications, including the Skype. And this protocol uh, called a Link or Link Server. And in 2017, actually in 2016, begin and, and 2016, Ilya and I occasionally found the flow in the protocol which we're going to talk about today. Next slide. So what is how to discover and how it really works? So it's really easy basically. So imagine that you have an email account and password and you need to add this email account, uh, email address, I mean account with a password to your uh, mail client let's say on the iOS device. So you open your iOS device and you have a list of the possible um, um, options how you can uh, add email accounts. So you for example choose like a, if you, if you have an account from the Microsoft like say exchange server, you choose like exchange and you just put your email address and the password. You click submit and you connect it. 
but basically, if some of you know the old school, so you know that to enter uh, the configuration of the email account to the uh, application takes some time because you need to know the username, you need to know the SMTP server, you need to know the IMAP or POP3 server, you need to know all the ports, you need to know what kind of uh, encryption is used and in what way. So it's basically complex. That's why Microsoft in 2006 announced this protocol to make your life easier. So basically when you take the email address, put it in your app, put your password in also over there and click submit, your my app will communicate to the server, some kind of server, to find out what configuration should be, especially for your case. It's quite easy. And this protocol works, uh, I mean, the process of this protocol is quite easy because your, your device, your app, need to define where to look um, uh, information uh, about the configuration, for example, in our case, in what domains it should be uh, gathered. And the second step, uh, that each, uh, the, uh, each server need to be asked to find out what configuration should be there. Uh, there are several ways how this information can be uh, received. Uh, so uh, in case of your app taking part in the LDAP or Active Directory, there is a way how to do that. So I don't really want to cover it here because it's, I mean, too much information. In case of you're interested, you can just take a look on that. The, another way is that when you uh, put your email address inside the app, email, your email address uh, divided on the different parts, like for example, username and uh, um, uh, domain name, and then the domain name used to uh, making the um, assumption where to look for the configuration. Uh, most uh, used way is when your email client trying to guess using a DNS request where the configuration should be. And, uh, as soon as this information is received, so uh, I mean, uh, let's say domain name is resolved, then the client making the get request to get this information and uh, working with this information. Right. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more in details how deriving URL from user email address works. So. Uh, Microsoft defines a simple algorithm. So you take an user email address, you split it into a local and domain part, and you use the main part to add two URLs into a list of potential auto-discover uh, servers. So first is just adding domain and add a path to uh, auto-discover XML file. And this file is just basically contains all settings for email client. And another URL is constructed by prepending out a discover word to domain and adding path. And later client sends authenticated requests to these URLs. And by authenticated means it could be use different authentication like basics for example or NTLM. Uh, so when we're talking about splitting any email address to local and domain parts, for first look, it is, might be a really simple task. You just uh, split this email by uh, add character, right? So what could be simpler than this? But actually, uh, there is multiple RFCs that define what is an email address, what characters allowed in email address, and it could be really complicated because later there have been added lots of support for Unicode characters, and situation when you have email address that looks the same, it could be valid and invalid at the same time, like an example here on the slide, right? So you may have an email address with two add characters, but it it is invalid unless you include local part in uh, double quads. So we actually saw and thinking about if this email address or any email address is used to derive uh, URLs of potential after discover servers and dealing and splitting email addresses could be a really complicated task. Uh, it's actually as any complicated thing, it is good point of failure. So we decided to take a list of 
uh, different valid and invalid addresses and take a few mobile device implementing mail clients and implementing after discover client as a part of email and uh, just test them uh, how whether they did this implementation correct or not. And uh, so since in many cases, I would say even in most cases except for Android, we cannot get an access to a source code just to review it, uh, we just build a simple test stand where we have a device and we observe in uh, network traffic and looking into network traffic to understand where clients trying to connect and whether it's trying to connect to uh, some URLs where it should not ever try to connect. Uh, and this is what we found. So usually when you make the research, you uh, uh, stumble sometimes on things you don't really know and you're trying to dig a bit deeper. So um, the idea of this research we received from our previous research about the WPAT. So I presented this research on the Black Hat uh, US uh, last year. So and this research is all about the domain collision. So and uh, as Ilya mentioned, uh, we uh, when we started doing this research, we've seen some uh, strange activities in, for example, our test network. And we just decided to dig deeper and in a way of uh, understand what's really happened. Ilya mentioned that we created the list of the not really standard uh, email addresses and we just try and uh, decided to use this not really standard email uh, list of the email address against the different uh, mail apps and devices. So in case of uh, uh, Samsung, so we just took the phone uh, with a, a stock mail client from Samsung and we uh, run the list, uh, quite long list of the non real standard email addresses in case of Samsung and actually it was looking fine. So it was looking fine. It was uh, quite uh, almost sure that wow, it's uh, working fine. It, but just at the end of the test, we tried the domain name which is looks like, uh, let's say now, like example.com.au. So basically this is like a second level domain name, SLD. And wow, we see that uh, as soon as we made, made the really request um, using the Samsung device uh, with a fully qualified email address, uh, which looks like uh, email address with a SLD, uh, we've seen something strange. So we dig a bit more and we've seen that in case of you have, for example, Samsung device and you're trying to uh, add the account, email account with the email address with SLD, you see this has strange traffic. And uh, uh, on the slide you can see here, so uh, Samsung device was making actually two requests and uh, we've we seen for the first, we've seen just one request, it looks really okay because like how the discover prefix was added to the uh, fully qualified domain name uh, derived from the email address. But wow, uh, just a few lines uh, later in the Wireshark we've seen that uh, <laughs> the another request was done like to the domain name which is not really uh, expected and the domain was like uh, auto discover as a prefix plus SLD domain and uh, the, the really important part of the domain was just uh, missing. And um, we digged around that and we uh, thought wow this is uh, the thing that we was looking for. Also when I was testing the uh, different devices, we also used uh, uh, iOS device uh, with a stock uh, client and when we used the stock client from iOS device, uh, basically mo uh, entire list was fine until we reached the email address which was really misspelled. So in this email address, instead of the dot in the second part of the email, it was at again. So when two ads was used at the email address, uh, iOS device also showed us really strange behavior and uh, this behavior was uh, like, um, uh, let's just see on, on the slide that this behavior was like uh, Apple device was just taking a domain name in the proper way and then somehow split this domain name uh, on two parts and only like, like right part uh, was taken with the auto discover prefix and uh, then iOS device made the request. Uh yeah, I just want to point out that this uh, vulnerability been recently fixed just a few days ago. Uh, Apple released an iOS 10.3 which contains fix for this. And uh, we forgot to mention that Samsung announced a uh, fix for their vulnerability uh, to, uh, even three months back into January. So all these issues now uh, announced as fixed. So. Uh, 
we found a few clients uh, that vulnerable and we decided, okay, how big as a problem is, how we can find out how many clients might potentially have similar vulnerabilities. There is like, if you go and see a list of female clients that support Exchange Server, you probably find a pretty long list for mobile devices, for desktops, etc. Uh, so, the only way we can see traffic is just to register after discover domain, rather for top level domain or for second layer, second level domain root zone. So if you take a look on Mozilla public suffix list, which contains about 8K records for what you can call second level domain. And IANA TLD is about 1.5K uh, top level domain zones, which give us about 10,000 different domains. So what we decided to do is uh, we register some domains and we run a simple HTTP sync server, which will accept requests uh, coming on uh, port 80 and 443. Uh, we register these domains pointed to our server got SSL certificates, and uh, we started looking into access log, right? So we, I just want to point out that we want to make we expected to see some requests coming with uh, user authentication data, so we made sure that we do not record any of this information. So we only recorded uh, potential email addresses to understand how many users might suffer against this problem, plus we recorded uh, user agents. So I remember that I deployed this uh, server back in August last year, and about like 3 a.m., and immediately I just started to see a bunch of requests coming in. I was just like, wow. And, uh, I had a really problem. Just explain why. You told why. Explain why. <laughs> now, it, when, when you see this uh, traffic coming in, you see this email addresses, and you know that if it's a standard access lock and you see email address there, then it means that it will, it, it was delivered with uh, user credential as well, because it is from authorization header, which delivered it as like basic authentication, right? So it's just like, plain text-based 64 encoded data, uh, which is wow. So uh, yeah, I, I was really had a trouble to fall asleep because like every car approaching our home, I saw it, it's just like uh, FBI guys is going to take me and put into jail for doing this. Uh, just like uh, to highlight this. So remember I told you that uh, you put your email address and the password inside the mail client and you click submit. Means that when you click submit, the client push the information, I mean your private information, in this case, email address and your password in an almost clear text to the server. And uh, Ilya also mentioned that we used uh, port 80, we used port 443, we had uh, test made, we made test uh, uh, with uh, SSL certificates, uh, self-signed, we made test with SSL certificates, which was, I mean, properly signed. And it uh, doesn't really matter in case of, for example, certificates are signed or not signed, it's still working because nobody really checking in case of certificate is really signed or not. And uh, another thing is really important that, I mean, Ilya trying, I mean, to make a thing more, I mean, smoother, but I would like to say in a more harder way. So we've seen clear text passwords, really. That's why he cannot really get sleep. And in the morning he got called me like, I don't know, seven o'clock in the morning saying that, hey, we're in trouble, we've seen the clear text password, we need to do with this something. So because of that, uh, this is a really huge issue, issue, and because of that uh, issue, we spend a lot of time just to figure out what's really happening over there. Yeah, I have to work a lot with vendors to make sure that they really understand how big is a problem and fix it. Yeah, and because of that, you've seen before that uh, Apple and uh, Samsung, they release, they release both the CVEs on time, and they was really collaborative with us to fix this problem. We have uh, spent about seven months I mean, in full speed to, on this project. And uh, during the seven month, we registered 26 domain names, not like at once. We do it like uh, step by step because we was, was trying to predict where we will receive more traffic 
and where the traffic will be more interesting for us. So 26 domain names during the six months registered. So during the six months, even though we was registering domain names, not like at once, but uh, I mean uh, one by one, we received uh, up to uh, up till I mean last week when we made a finalized our statistics, like 13 million requests. So like one three, 13 million requests was sent to our infrastructure with uh, uh, private information about the people who was using uh, the Maya clients. Out of these 13 million requests, we've seen 9 million requests with login and passwords. I mean, the domain names, uh, login and passwords. And uh, uh, out of these 9 million, we've seen like 220,000 unique login and passwords from these 26 domain names we, we predicted to have registered and uh, different uh, versions of the uh, mail clients. So we collected unique, uh, uniquely like 2,500 unique mail clients. So I mean, in case of it's like we're saying like 2,000, like 473, means that it's also different versions maybe from the same mail clients. So just uh, uh, this digit just to show you what diversity we had on our infrastructure. Yeah, uh, so we have more information about this research in our papers that will be published today. So go and check out uh, Black Hat uh, website. After 6 p.m., they'll publish uh, white papers that contains more information about these data sets and the graphs. And actually, I want to talk about graphs a little bit more because after January, when Samsung released their patch, we see that trends of all this traffic is really going down now. So what we can, whoa, let's get back. What we can do and uh, what are the possible mitigations here? So first of all, for users, when uh, you're using software like mail clients, which you might not know what's underneath, uh, which might happen to use this after discover protocol, uh, please use recommended versions by vendor. So in case of uh, Microsoft and Exchange Server, uh, I better use what they recommend. Or otherwise, if you're using any third party uh, clients that support Exchange Servers, you better test in a different way like we did to make sure that your credentials won't be leaking anywhere. Uh, for developers and enterprise, I would suggest to use and follow best practices from Microsoft. This is protocols that they developed. Uh, they have lots of documentation how properly use it. And uh, yeah, please follow this. Uh, we also wanted to put some suggestion for IANA slash ICANN uh, to ban registry of new auto discover protocols so people won't abuse uh, vulnerabilities that we are talking. Uh, but it might not realistically happen. I mean, it's, it's working uh, quite good sometimes. So last year, as I told, I presented uh, the, another presentation on the Black Hat US called WPAT, Bad WPAT. And this presentation was also about the main collision, but not about the mail clients, but about the proxy settings configuration uh, and propagation of this inside and outside the network. So, and uh, we, I've worked with the ICANN and informed them about some of the domain names we need, need to be blocked or addressed somehow. And the ICANN really released the um, uh, special IP address. Uh, IP address is like uh, 127.0.53.53. This is the main name used nowadays for the main collision. So in case of you ping some of the IP addresses and you see this, sorry, some of the domain names and you see such an IP address, this means that I can address this IP address, uh, this domain name to the problem of the main collision. It's really good. So we also trying to work now with I can about this uh, domain collision and we hope this, that at least the new TLDs, new top level domain names, which will be released in the future, will be under this band so nobody can register uh, uh, autodiscover.tld or autodiscover.sld in the future. And the conclusion of this presentation. So actually, uh, as researchers, we had a lot of fun because uh, you, when you find such a uh, vulnerability, because we always trying to dig uh, really deep, uh, but this uh, actually vulnerability was really easy to find and we was 
so surprised that nobody else before us found that and, and released this uh, information about the, um, uh, this vulnerability. So um, for us, it's really important to highlight here that when you develop something, or in case of your network admin, you have different types of tools to analyze the traffic. So the easiest way in case of your network admin and you have access to DNS server or DNS cache server, you can always check where your clients, in case of a big organization, trying to log in or go. So, and uh, I've seen on some forums, maybe uh, like four or five years ago, people was mentioning that, why my client spamming this really strange auto discover domain? Because it's really strange, you don't know what really happened, but nobody really dig on that. So, uh, from us as researchers, to you as researchers as well, I really advise to look and uh, dig, uh, sometimes deep, sometimes not, and sometimes it's really easy to find the uh, uh, vulnerability like that. And uh, of course, there's nobody perfect, because this uh, vulnerability, what we found for this uh, uh, iOS and Samsung devices, and we're still uh, looking into this problem, because uh, most probably some other vendors is also involved, and we will try to make another presentation later. So uh, uh, this means that nobody's perfect, and not, it doesn't mean in case of we highlighted here like uh, Apple or Samsung ha got a problem, believe me that other vendors will be mentioned later on in, uh, in this auto discovery vulnerability. We have something to show you. So basically um, we can show you the live log of the uh, 26 uh, auto discovery domain names. And uh, as Ilya mentioned before, I just want to state it once again. So we don't save any uh, private information on our servers. We uh, uh, clean the passwords completely. We don't save it, and we hash the email addresses. So here, for example, we just re uh, replace the email addresses which we hash, and we just the email address like I don't know, see like xxx at xxx dot xxx. So you see the traffic now it's not quite uh, high because Apple and Samsung they released the patches and the uh, traffic gone a bit lower, but it's still we see the request. Which is good, so, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Say again. Which is good. This and is really good. So is we, we was really happy because we uh, worked really closely with both organizations and, and uh, it was quite collaborative. But you see still that some of the requests coming from some of the Samsung devices, so it's mean every, almost every like, second or third request here pushing out the password and the, and the email address. All right, uh, I guess that's it. And we have for about five minutes or four minutes your questions, for questions. Yeah. Yes, please. Not only about the misspelled email address, because uh, the email address from Samsung was a fully qualified email address. But still, uh, just because of some lack of development and the parsing of the email address, especially of the, the main part of the email address, uh, we could uh, predict what kind of domain name we need, just, we need to register. And on this domain name, we start receiving the traffic. So it was a fully qualified email address. Yeah, another question, please. So the question is, in case of you have, uh, you doing like an old school mode and you know where, what is SMTP and IMAP and how, uh, what, what, what does mean port uh, and uh, SSL connection. So uh, does it mean that in case of uh, somebody trying to do it like an old school away mode that uh, the auto discover protocol will be involved? No, in that case, uh, auto discover protocol won't be involved because request will be done, I mean, uh, in the old school way. So you will just be trying to make a usual connection to the server. Any more questions? Yes, please. So you announced it in Blackcast in August and it took six months to fix. Was there a communication error? Uh, so we was quite busy with other projects. So we identified this issue like in August, but really we put our hands on that. I think it was like. It was November. November, November when December, we started yeah. talking yeah. with vendors. So we had it in our pocket and we was like really. Uh, uh, keen to talk uh, on that, and when we really start doing that, was really shocked. Yeah. Any more questions? So I have uh, like another question I always ask about this project, also from the organizations who was communicating. So people also asking, 
who owns uh, the domain names which we don't own but somebody else who can also receive the traffic. So all, we also made a research around that and uh, basically uh, no, almost nobody owns domain names which can receive traffic like that. So we was lucky to own these domain names which we own now. Uh, but still, um, this issue needs to be researched more because some of the domain names which can receive traffic like that, they are registered by other people, but they don't really ha hold any infrastructure on that, uh, I mean, uh, domain name and IP address. But it also can be that in case of your access domain, uh, I mean, domain name or IP address from the certain uh, network space, you don't see any communication. But maybe people also filter it by the I mean, firewalls and maybe they can target only certain uh, IP spaces or organizations to send the traffic to these domain names. Any more questions? Thank you so much. Thank you.